Welcome to the LibriVox Book Report. <sighs> sorry, Not Sorry, Dreams, Mistakes, and Growing Up by Naya Rivera is Naya Rivera's autobiography. My interest first peaked in Naya after watching a compilation of Britannia and falling in love with how absolutely adorable Santana and Brittany were together. Naya Rivera was an actress most famous for portraying Santana, a lesbian mean girl cheerleader who learned to care for others in Glee. Sorry Not Sorry follows Naya's life from a precocious child actor to her marriage to Ryan Dorsey. It's Naya's years of growing up with all the hardship that entails. Her writing style is very casual and down to earth, even when she is relating her hardest moments. I highly recommend the book, but it should come with a few content warnings for abortion, drug abuse, death, and eating disorders. The frank nature of Naya's writings may make some people uncomfortable when she starts talking about heavy topics. While was charming and endearing for talks of childhood stardom and messy relationships, come across as flippant when the intention is turned to darker subjects. At least at first, Vanaya has a talent for getting the reader to empathize with her through her darkest moments, particularly through her money troubles. When she talked about rejoicing on receiving her $6 residuals because that was lunch. I felt that. I grew up poor. Heck, I'm still poor. SSI isn't exactly letting me live the easy life. It was the first time I felt like a celebrity might actually get what it means to live in poverty. Unlike Gwyneth Paltrow trying to live on a food stamps budget. <laughs> Naya also went in depth about her eating disorder, which touches on all the complex intersections of her identity. In middle school, Naya developed an eating disorder. With her family's finances, neither of her parents had a job. The only source of income was Naya's Coogan account and her acting gigs. Naya had an immense responsibility as the breadwinner. She felt as if she had lost control, and the one thing she could control was what she ate. At the same time, Naya was dealing with self-hatred due to her ethnic other, her words, appearance. She tried to fit in with the white girls at school who were solely focused on looking beautiful and losing weight. Naya absorbed the white girl's attitude about food. It wasn't until she went to high school and was accepted by the black girls who emphasized that boys like thick girls that Naya began to develop a healthy relationship to food. Naya described how being an other affected her. Growing up, she never found a place she fit in. Unlike her brother, who inherited darker skin and more African features, she inherited a mix of features. While her brother could easily fit into the black kids group at school, Naya was too white for the black kids and too black for the white kids. She twisted herself into knots trying to fit in. But with her half Puerto Rican, quarter black, quarter German self, it was extremely difficult. When she was with the white kid, she had to deal with racist jokes and comments from her so-called friends. Every time she called them out on it, she risked outing herself as an other, not a part of the group. As someone who's queer, I get it. Whenever I hang out with cis or straight people and they say something queerphobic, I risk outing myself if I stand up. It makes friendships extremely tenuous because there's this push and pull of standing up for yourself but doing it in a way that doesn't endanger yourself. And navigating those friendships is extremely exhausting. I'm glad I no longer put myself in those positions and I'm glad that Naya was able to learn to navigate this complex world and find true friends as an adult. Another moving portion of the book was when Naya talked about her abortion. <laughs> Abortion is still very much a taboo topic. The only other stories of abortion in the media I can think of are in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Well, should we want another baby? There are options, you know. We just, well, mention it to Father Brock. He won't 
won't poke on. Is that I know you're younger than two. Okay, those options are for teenagers the month after winter formal. Bojack Horseman and and sex education. Deep in the cell of my heart, so I will feel so Oftentimes, the pro-choice side of things whoopify people who choose to get an abortion and paints them as tragic victims, while the pro-life side makes them out to be reprehensible monsters who committed murder. Heck, just look at what's going on in Texas right now. But this was an actual person's experience with abortion in all its complexity. It was an intimate look into Naya's thought processes and feelings about having an abortion. The reader feels the isolation, guilt, regret, fear, relief, and every emotion Naya went through. Naya felt stressed out of her mind for two weeks and could barely eat. Smoking was the only thing that calmed her down, even though it made her feel guilty about the baby she planned to abort. As Naya says, everything about it was fucked up. On a lighter note, Naya spent an entire chapter talking about her relationship with God and her journey as a Christian. And miraculously, it didn't feel forced or cliched. Maybe it's just a me thing or a growing up charismatic evangelical thing. But oftentimes, statements like trust God has a plan or just trust God feels like trite bullshit. They're the words you say when you don't know what to say. In the best of times, these sayings feel hollow, and in the worst of times, they feel callous. It helped that Naya was so frank about all the bullshit she had gone through that statements about being still with God actually hold some weight. I have a few concerns about Naya's overemphasis on work and just doing your damn job. Even in the chapters describing her childhood, she talks about how happy she was to work and her professional attitude. She tells of one time where she had a 103 degree fever and she insisted on going in to film that day and nailing it. And I worry about that kind of attitude where work is put before everything. Even in the chapter about Naya's abortion, she put it off for two weeks for work. Naya credits her career with helping her get through tough times. She's able to throw herself into work when everything around her is shit. But that seems like a very unhealthy mindset. If your value and peace are in your work, what do you do when that is gone? This isn't a hypothetical for me. When I worked, I felt productive, like I was doing shit with my life and bringing in a paycheck while going through college was a matter of pride. But when I got sick, I couldn't work. I couldn't bring in a paycheck. For the longest time, I felt like I lost my value, that I had nothing because I could no longer work. Of course, it didn't help that the society is so ableist that it feeds these ideas into your mind at a young age. I eventually realized it was all internalized ableism, and that my value wasn't intrinsically linked to my ability to hold down a job, and I was able to rebuild my sense of self as a person devoid of a job, and it has actually enabled me to explore my creativity more and I feel more fulfilled. But I wonder how much of Naya's obsession with work is tied into growing up in poverty and our unhealthy coping mechanisms that she hasn't had time to deconstruct, and our elements of living in this capitalist hellhole. If she didn't live in a society where those who are unemployed, disabled, and homeless are treated like garbage because they don't have a job, would she have this overemphasis on work and doing your job? The book leaves off with Naya, confident in motherhood and her relationship with her husband, Ryan. It feels like she's arrived from her tumultuous beginnings to the calm, peaceful present. It's a happy ending. I just wish Naya's story had actually stopped there. But it goes on beyond the pages of her autobiography. And it ends tragically. 
Naya went out on a pontoon boat with her son, and a current snatched the boat away, and Naya drowned. She was 33. That was Sorry Not Sorry, Dream Mistakes and Growing Up. A 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Link in the description. Next book will be Das Kapital, Volume 1 by Karl Marx. Happy listening! Well, I was stuck in bed, and you were stuck here with me. But now you may go and live your lives. Go, be cute, keep gay, be crime. Bye! Julie, do the, uh, the thing. Don't freak out. It's not...